How y'all doing? What is today? <clears throat> What's today, Mom? What's the... The 14th. No, no, the day. Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, it's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everyone. I think it's Tuesday. Is it yeah. Tuesday? I forgot the day. But anyway, um, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? I um wanted to come on here with my mom because last time I was telling some old good stories uh, of the legendary Sharon Palmer. And so I just thought to myself, you know what? Hey, Jahi. I thought to myself, you know what? I should just have my mom um come on here. What up, Shalanda? I should just have my mom come on here and, you know, interview her <laughs> and um get some of those stories straight from, you know, the beautiful stallion's mouth. <laughs> As the saying goes from the horse's mouth. Hey, Poochie. Poochie's on uh, um, this. Um, hey, Poochie. That's my cousin. Love um, you. Okay, so Sharon Palmer. I think the people want to know. I think, you know, what people know is that you're a wise lady. What they have seen of you <laughs> is that you're a wise lady that, um, you know, is passionate about family, God, and your kids. Amen. <laughs> so the first thing I want to ask is, Sharon, did you always know you wanted to have kids? No. <laughs> I did not want any children. <laughs> I always wanted to like do theater and run off to Broadway and I was one of them women that was like, I ain't never having kids. I'm never going to ever have any kids and girl, I started having kids when I was 21, 20. I got pregnant when I was 20, <laughs> had my first baby at 21. So now let's backtrack it. Why or how did your mind change around from not wanting kids at all and being very career driven and career focused to... You know what? Hell, I'm going to just have some kids. I just had sex, honey. What? No, no, no. You no. Have, no. You no. no. No, Mom, now that, that's another thing about Sharon, y'all, is she goes too far and too real sometimes. She, hey, Malcolm. Malcolm's in the, in, uh, the live. Hey, Mom. Malcolm. Hi, I love sometimes you. Sometimes Sharon goes too deep. When my mom had talks with me she shot she literally sat me down at denny's first of all because denny's we used to always go we could never really first of all i still think denny's is a fun little restaurant but when we first moved to california we couldn't afford like you know fancy dinners and stuff like that and that was like a really a place we would go as a family like to eat at denny's and like it would be really cool so my mom takes me at uh 16 or 17 years old to denny's to have this talk that's right Child, she sat me down was she, was, she was like i now I, t I know i told you then i'm gonna tell you again now you got, you got your period, you can get a baby. A baby can come now. That's so if right. you decide to spread them legs and go out there and rock them socks, understand, <laughs> you're going to be a mama, a teenage right. mama. And just went in and literally like went into the details. Oh, my gosh, mom, you know what I need to tell them? Oh my God. I need to tell y'all the conversation that we had one day when I was watching Maury. You remember? You know the story I'm about to say, mom? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I have two versions of this story, well, mom. Okay, so look. Larry. You know, that's my dad in the back, y'all. Say, Larry, hey, dad. Can you put this in the microwave just about a minute? Say, I what up, Larry? Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> Larry don't have no time for y'all. He barely got time for us. One minute is good. <laughs> now she got him doing her work. Got him over there going to heat up her tea. Anyway, we'll talk later about how she get a man right. Um, Now let's go to... Back to what I was saying. So one day I was watching Maury, you know what I'm saying? And I shouldn't have been watching that show as a little kid. Obviously, but... You know, Midwest growing up, everybody was watching Maury, Jerry, all of that stuff. So I was watching Maury, and my mom, like, walked past one time. And um, she heard Maury saying, in the case of oral did you or did you not, blah, blah, blah. Y'all know the whole gag. And my mom heard this, and she said, oral And she looked at me, and she said, do you know what oral is? And I'm like, no. You know, as a little kid, I, I don't know really genuinely what it is. I knew it was, maybe it was something bad that he shouldn't have been doing. But I didn't really know what it was. And she said, I want you to do something. I want you to get that dictionary over there. And I want you to put in. And I want you to put in oral. I want you to find the definition and put them together. And you then tell me what it means. Child, when I tell you, I was done from that point forward. That's right, though. Any word that you don't understand. Don't be ashamed you don't understand. Get that dictionary and look up the word. But the fact that she always wanted me to know what I was watching and what I was doing. Another version of this same story, I'll tell you how much Sharon keeps it real with her kids. I was, um, I forget how old I was, but my pony, this will give you an example of how old I was. Pony was on the radio. Genuine pony. 
And I'm like, my pony, let's do it. Singing everything like that. And my mom says, do you know what you're singing about? And I was like, I hate the rhetorical questions. Thank and I'm you. like, um, no, you know, of course Thank I'm a kid. So I don't know what I'm singing about. And she says, he's talking about simulating through riding a pony. That's the simulation, the manipulation of to the lyrics. And I'm just like, Mom, you could have said. It was a nice song, but you needed to know what you were singing. Especially little kids running around singing the lyrics to all these songs and they don't understand you're <sighs> singing about and you're only seven. <laughs> oh, no. There's something wrong with that. <laughs> it's not nothing wrong for you to listen to the song because they mean it's on the radio. Oh, my But God. you should at least know that your little seven year old is singing some <laughs> you shouldn't be singing. <laughs> I'm a cussing Christian. Yeah, that's that's the other thing about Sharon. Sharon don't have no problems cursing. It's people all the always sometimes they catch me with potty mouth and I'm like, look, my mother, my mother talked. You got it on it. She got you know, look, she loves me and she loves me. So hey, that's all I need. Okay, so what what else okay, now I one of the best stories that my mother always tells is a story of how her and my father fell in love. That to this day is one of the most unbeat storylines in the world and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit of what happened and I want Sharon to explain why she made some of the choices that she made okay oh so I'm gonna start let me see where I can start what, what would be a good okay okay so I say this so so uh, should I start at the beginning how can I start this wow this is hot he made it too hot huh <laughs> tournament my both of my parents did speech they were both really artsy kind of kids and so oh chance is in the live hey chance hey, we miss chance. you we met in uh, college we met in college in um chicago i thought y'all met at the speech tournament in new orleans oh yeah you are right my bad she you know what know. No, no. we we went to the same college and then we both won a trip to new orleans and it was in New Orleans where we talked. Uh, so she I wasn't been, paying Larry no attention. She had her I friend Carl. I have been seeing this dude her walking down, down the hall. Yeah, yeah. Now I wasn't paying him no My attention. dad, let me tell y'all Sharon, why Sharon was so tough. My dad told me at the speech tournament, first of all, my mother won every award. Not to, you know, subtle brag, light flex, but you see it. She won every award because she was killing the game with the monologues and the vocal ability. Give him a little blows. Blow, blow a little. Just sing a little. Just a Jesus is on the main line. You ought to tell him what you want. Yeah. Now I'm going to just let that sit there for you. So you can get into that real quick, honey. Okay? So my mom, my dad said when he saw my mom, he was so blown away by her talent and her beauty that he just, he was beauty. just like. Oh my goodness. He was just like, I could not, you know get you know he just was like i had to figure out how to get next to this woman so they meet after my mom won award at this like a little little after party things that they have going on and my mom was walking around arrogant as heck that my dad says my dad says my mom was acting so bougie walking around that event that every moment that he tried to speak to her like every moment that he tried to come near her she would just like look down upon him like uh -huh. Excuse me, I've got to go. Like, she was being so bougie towards him. I'm like, oh my gosh, mom, why are you doing that to my father? So anyway, my dad, being the kind of guy he is, look, if you don't want me, somebody will want me. So my dad finds some other cheap trick at the event, <laughs> gets cuddled up with her and everything like that. Make a long story short, a couple of days before they get to leave the, you know, the little trip that they went on, my mom ends up hanging out with somebody that's rooming with my dad. She goes into the room and ends up seeing my dad in the bed with another woman. Now, of course, they ain't married. They ain't, you know, nothing. They're not even, they're not even dating. She, she was giving my dad the curve. So my dad found him somebody to get jiggy with. My mom finds them in the bed together. Yeah, and she was like, oh, he, and my mom was so like very churchy, very like, you know, very just like, you know, kind of prudent, very just like, uh, you know, he's gross. I, I knew he was gross, you know, she, she just didn't have no time for him. But to my father's defense, what was he supposed to do? You know what I mean? She didn't want me. Okay, you're not supposed to hop in the bed with nobody you meet at a tournament. Yeah, that's the, okay, that's the first thing. But the reality of the situation is, 
this is why you always have to stop. You, 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 your mind can get away from you. You allow yourself to think certain things. So he allowed himself to think that the reason why I wasn't talking to him, the reason why I wasn't, you know, you know, coming on yeah. to his advances mm -hmm. was because I was snooty and I was stuck up. But the truth was I had a sore throat. <laughs> I was sick. And when I came back from the trip and went to the doctors, I had strep throat. So he ought to have been happy I wasn't up in his face. But he, but you, but you see how you can take things yeah. a whole nother way? Yeah, exactly. So my dad, being the kind of guy he is, he never stopped. I mean, he obviously was very embarrassed by my mom finding him at that, you know, in the bed with that other woman. But what can he do? He, they're young, they're doing their thing, whatever. He can't do but nothing. But honestly, as a woman, I really didn't judge him by that because we were all young. We were in our early, you know, 19, 20 years old. And if he found some girl who was trifling enough to sleep with him. Now she trifling. And she didn't know who he was. I didn't really blame him. He's a man. He's a young man. He's single. He should be able to do what he wants to She's do. She's still mad about it to this day. Nobody. Can you tell? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so my dad goes back to their school and he goes to her friend Carl. My mom had this legendary friend that they always talk about Carl. Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards. That was that's their guy. They always talk about Carl. Mom, I don't think I ever met your friend Carl. You never met Carl? No, I my mom and dad, dad you they you both love Carl. From here. So I, I, Carl is a legendary friend. And Carl is like, you know, Larry keeps hitting me up, Sharon, asking me about you. You know, he wants to see you. He wants to hang out with yeah. you. When you come back to school, he wants y'all to meet up. And my dad kept kind of pressing the issue and asked Carl if he could get her, her number and everything like that. Make a long story short, Sharon never came back to school, honey. Sharon was done with school and started going to the recording studios and doing backup. Name some of the folks she was doing backup with, Sharon. I was, girl, I was doing backup on like mix, mix on like not mix. They called it um, house music, house music remixing. So I was doing like for Janet Jackson remixes and uh, artists. CC Peniston, yes, C. C. tons Peniston, of people. Lisa Stansfield. So my mom was doing her yeah. thing. My mom had big dreams, honey. If you couldn't get into it yet. Get into it now. Sharon had big dreams. And she was like, I'm done with school. I'm done with this community college gag. I'm going to the big leagues. So Sharon was traveling around yeah, town yeah. with my auntie Nene. They was going to the studios, doing their thing. What up, Keith? Being young. Being young. She never came back to school. So my dad was like, no, wow. This is crazy. I'm never going to see this girl again. I, I just got to get got to get her on the phone. He said, look, I've been chasing you around. I've been calling Carl. I've been, you know, doing all this stuff, trying to get in touch with you, girl. Now, now, if you want me to stop calling you and you have no intentions of actually going on a date with me and giving me a chance, tell me now and I will leave you alone. And honey, Sharon ain't no fool. That got her shook up. She was like, oh, wait a minute. He coming at me like that? Okay, I'll let you take me on a date. So they go on their first date. And where was your first date at, mama? Um, I was working at Sears and he was working. Come on, Sears! And he was working at a tire shop or something. So we met at 95th and Western in Chicago at this mall called Evergreen Plaza. Evergreen Plaza. Any Chicagoans in the house? Y'all know exactly what she's talking about. Yes. So they met there. Make a long story short, they dated for a while. They dated for a while. Um, you know, back and forth in Illinois. My dad was, you know, incessant. On her, I mean, on the end of their first, or in, on, at, the, at the end of one of their first few dates, my mom lived in the suburbs. She lived in the area called Robbins. My dad, he lived in the north, north northern Chicago. He lived he deep lived in the, on the south side. Oh, he's in he's the south like side of Chicago. Line, yeah. So he lived in Chicago. My mom lived in. Um, Robbins. So, you know, my dad came, my dad drove all the, not drove, because he ain't had no car. He didn't need one in Chicago, but he took all these buses, all this stuff to get down to Robbins, about, which is not that close. Yeah, it's, it's a long ride. He did all this stuff just to hang out with my mom. And when he goes to hang out with her, she won't hold his hand. She won't kiss him. She won't hug him. She's literally you like this. Need nobody on now. She's literally like this. Look, I Being like this to him, very pinched, very, mm, very dad. Very and my dad, lady -like. my dad tells her, my dad tells her, he says, you know, okay, I'll leave. Cause she was like, I need you to go like now. Cause it's time for no, me no, to go no. home. Oh, the plant, the thing is the bus only runs at a certain time. Like I was out in the country. He was in the big city and where I lived at 6 PM, hey, the bus stopped work working. So if you wasn't on that 6 PM bus, you were stuck in Robbins. 
And I didn't have a car. He didn't have a car. So I told him, I said, you need to hurry up to catch that 6 p.m. bus because my mama not going to let you stay here. Exactly. And if y'all knew Mildred, which is my grandmother, who? She's a real hoot. So my mom was like, I got to get this guy out of here because I'm not bringing him back to my mama and anything like this and dealing with him. He needs to go. And my dad said, I'm not going to leave to go to the train station without a kiss. Without a kiss. Now tell me, ain't he cute for that? I think my dad, when I hear the story, I'm like in the streets looking for my father because he is the cutest man. He puts so much effort into everything. And he's like, that's like the perfect way to get a first date kiss from somebody. Like, look, I came all this way and I'm not leaving that until you give me a little kiss. <laughs> He's a lot like you. Y'all <laughs> both charming in a manipulative sort of way. <laughs> oh my gosh. So literally, I live for that part of this story because I'm just like, my dad, I'm I'm just like so here for him. Anyway, so my dad goes, whatever. Make a long story kiss, short. He gets his kiss. He gets his kiss. And my mom. Here she goes again, being this high rolling chick, decides to move to New York because she's going to the big leagues. She's going to be a star. She don't have no time for nobody trying to stop her from following her dreams, honey. <laughs> Sharon is taking herself to New York. She posted. I'm trying to have no kids, that's for sure. All right. She yeah. posted up in Newark, New Jersey with her cousin. Mm -hmm. Chill out over there. I was What's with, up to Irvington, She would ride up to the city. She was going to school. And I mean, she was doing her thing. My dad. Let me tell you this. The day that my mom left, my, she told my dad when she was leaving. Let me tell y'all, this is the part of the story that's going to kill all y'all that kill me. She walks no, into the... No, no, I'm going to tell them that. No, I can't tell them. No, you can't tell them that. I got to tell no, them, Mom. I got to tell them. I got to tell them, I gotta tell them because no. he's not watching. He's not watching, but you got to hear this. You got to be quiet. I'll be quiet. <laughs> so <laughs> my... <laughs> don't know me. <laughs> so my mom told him when she was going to the airport, right? And, you know, she's at the airport. And they yell on the speaker mic, Sharon Palmer. No, I mean, excuse me, David, because that was your name at the time. Sharon Davis, there's a Larry Palmer at the front wanting to see you. My dad had come with roses and flowers to see her off to New York. Can I tell y'all what Sharon did? Tell him my, my plane is already left. Here. She said, tell him my plane is already left. <laughs> I wasn't looking for no commitments, y'all. I wasn't looking for no commitments. I was going to New York. I couldn't have no ball and chain. You know, how men, you know, men always. Apparently, the way to keep a, the people that uh, think that way. Apparently, the way to keep a man around for a long time is to continuously deny his. Because that's, <laughs> that's what Sharon did. She denied him every step of the way. And he asked her to marry him. I need to start denying men, everybody. Men, but no, but a lot of people think that only mm -hmm. only men think that way. Women want things, they want careers, and you know they're not trying to tie themselves down with no one dude that's trying to impregnate them. My mom is a savage. Anyway, the story doesn't end there. You thought you was done, love? We got more to go. So my mom moved to New York. My dad's like, you know what? Hey, it's fine. She moved to New York, but there's still something about this girl I like. Got her number, got to, to her mom, her sisters, got her number where she was staying at in New Jersey, would call her every single night. Yeah. They would talk every hours. single night for hours and hours and hours. I mean, he my had dad. Like a, like a thousand dollar phone bill. He would talk to her every day and night and they would talk about everything. My dad is a, for everybody asking, my dad is an Aries and my mother is a Virgo. So just to give you the background on well, the Let signs. me tell you something that he did though. That I, Now this is when I really start like... You can go with a guy and you like him. And you say, well, this dude is really down for me. And um, I get it, but you're not ready for love or anything like that. But you're like, you know, he's a cool guy. But when I really felt that this could go t much further was when I was in school in New York. And you need things when you're in school. You need shoes. I needed tap shoes. I needed all kinds of stuff. And books and everything. And, and, you know, I didn't come from a lot of money. <clears throat> and my, my, my father passed when I was 10. And my mother was just a regular hardworking woman. And so she would send me what she could send me. And then I had to go get food stamps so that I could eat. And so I remember on the phone talking to Larry saying, I don't, I don't have any tap shoes. And so they're going to put me out of tap class. And I just kept saying I needed $70. And I wasn't saying it like... I need you to give me $70. We didn't have that type of relationship at the time. We were just dating at the a, time. A, a little bit. You know, like I wasn't asking no man for no money. And I just said, 
I just really need about 70 bucks to get a tap, shoes, I need whatever, and all this stuff. And then literally the next day, he had overnighted me $70 and a teddy bear. And teddy bear said, I am with you always. And I will do everything I can to help you because you are very talented and you just need help. And that touched me because nobody had ever given me anything. I had always had to work and scrape and hustle for everything. And for this man, who I knew he didn't have nothing either. He was just a regular guy working at a tire shop. And for him to give me $70, like this was back in the 80s. $70 back in the 80s was, could have been almost two, dollars $300. And for him to give that to me, I knew he really cared about me. And mm -hmm. I knew that he thought I was special. And once you find... And a, you are, mama. And once you find somebody and people in your life that think you're special, then that's, your, that's who you rock with. And let me just you say... You rock with the people that think you're special. And let me just tell you, piggybacking off of what my mom just said there, which is so true. My dad said, you know, Kiki, you are always going to be my child. You know, and that's, that's the way it works. Like, when you think about, you know, you know your daddy is always going to be your daddy. It's your mom who chosen. And I, I thank my dad every day for... Not only just the respect he had for my mom, but the respect he had for himself to understand the person that he wanted to bring a child into the world with. This is the person he gave me as a mother. That's who he chose for me. Well, I was and he looked high. I was looking good, though. I was looking better than all y'all. I looked better than all my daughters. I'm sorry. Anyway, back to the story. Right. Y'all look all right, you know. Anyway, <laughs> back to the story. We're getting to the end coming near. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. So that that was going on. Everything she was saying was going on. They were talking on the phone. They were connecting. Right. You know, but all over the phone, all of a sudden, no, no more. My mom got no call. You know, it, it, a couple of days passed. She's like, "What the hell is going on?" And she's like, "What what's what's up?" You know, yeah, I haven't heard. Talk like every night for like a month straight, two hours. Even on Saturdays and Sundays. She's like, "Where's Larry?" At? You know, this dude. He all of a sudden switched up, changed up. Like, what's up with this guy? You know, come to find out. My father had gotten into a car accident, hit by a truck. His mouth, like... His teeth went through uh, his... Right, so he couldn't talk. Through his jaw. Through My his dad had a total crazy accident moment, was stuck in the hospital. He could not call her. My mother took the next flight out of Newark, and she never came back. And they've been together ever, ever since. since. <laughs> <laughs> like the episode of All My Children. <laughs> it sounds like episode but How I Met Your Mother. Isn't that isn't my parents' love story the most amazing love story that you ever could hear, Dad? And, here? I never, and I'll never forget. He's just always had our back, not just my back, our back. I remember when the talent agent in Chicago said you were talented. You were about eight or nine years old, and I said, Larry. I mean, we had just brought a house and we were just doing well. And I said, Larry, they saying that you know Kiki is talented. And we should go to California. He said, absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. He, I mean, he just has always supported anything that we wanted to do. Everybody else thought we was crazy. Y'all going to leave your house? My dad, you guys, has loved my mother so fiercely. He has loved us so fiercely. I literally have the best parents in the world. So I thought, you know, i show you that story today. There's story for day, stories for day that I have with Sharon. Sharon has stories of her own that she could tell. Sharon <laughs> has stories of her life with me, with her, yeah. all of us, with every. So yeah. we'll, we, we yeah, we'll, I just want to set the record straight because I was listening the last time you was talking and you said I was about to jump on that woman in Toronto. <laughs> for the record. Okay, Sharon, for, give them the real. For the record, I don't threaten anyone unless they <laughs> mess with my kids. Or, or say, you know, you leave people kids alone. You should never be chastising nobody else's kids and threatening other people's For y'all just joining, my mom is going over a last chat. I yeah. had told uh, everybody how my mom had cussed this lady out on the Knights of the South Bronx set. Yeah. Uh, next time, I'll tell y'all about why my mama closed the set down of Akila and the B. Uh, <laughs> that will be a good one. Okay. okay, I'll say that for later this week. That Love y'all. That's a good one. <laughs> she she closed the whole set down and said, we ain't filming no movie. It's over in the director's space. We'll get into that later. <laughs> Love y'all. Hope y'all had a fun time, okay? And uh, remember, everybody needs a Larry in their life. Take care. Yes.